I got a question for you, John. A lot of the fans sort of look at you and you have this stigma as you, you know, you're pretty relaxed. You're not super competitive. Is that a stigma you like or is that something that you want to explode more or it is what it is? In reality, like, I spend like 98% of my time thinking about the tour and 98% of my time thinking about surfing as a whole. Like, I put so much time and I put so much energy into competing. I was like, I don't care who won that event. Like, what did Gabe get? Because, <laughs> like, you know, I feel like he is that, like, uh, that level right now where that level is. Like, he's so consistent. He's such a good surfer and he can do everything. He can do the airs. He can do the turns. And so, for me, that fires me up to have someone like that on tour. When you see Gabe do it, like, last year, I remember the snapper, he did his first heat, I think it was, he did, like, a big straight air and landed into, like, a blow tail reverse into, like, another snap. I was like, I gotta start doing airs again. Don't lie, there's a little part of you that still wants to be there. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming back for a couple of QSs. You and Kelly. Oh, no. Nah. Nah. I, I know when I'm getting flogged, mate. I, I know when to leave. <laughs> and then the third one was totally different again, where it was, it felt like I was a tradie. I felt like I was going and hammering nails in every single day and I was doubting myself every day paddling out for a heat. I was like, I'm losing today. Like never, never felt that confident. Interesting. Really? Mm. That's super interesting. John joins the search and kicks off the next search program on his boat with Mick and Mason. I'll confirm that. Um, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Got inside work from management, no. Uh, look, would love to have him, but um, yeah, look, I, I don't know. It'd be awesome. I, I'd love to do a, a boat trip anyway with you. Um, you know, if it's on the same label or not, I'm, I'm willing to go. It'd be so fun. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen, but I think having Mick and Mason on the boat trip going surfing, Empty waves would be like a dream for me. <laughs> Until you suck on a boat with us for 10 days and, you, and then we just totally alter your life. <laughs> and you never come back to the same ever again. <laughs> I always added in new things, you know. <clears throat> there was a time there where I'd only ride Takoros in Hawaii or, you know, every time I go to California, I'll pick up a Mayhem Um you know, I, I like to just see what other shapers are doing. To that point, too, you know, like I rode Kolohe, one of Kolohe's boards at Bells last year. And Kolohe's grown up surfing lowers and T Street and all those tiny, gutless little waves. And so his boards really fly over the water. And so I rode this board, Mayhem made him, that was really short and really skatey. And I was just like, whoa, this thing is sick. And then so, I mean, coming into this year, I kind of took it back to Pizel and it adjusted it a little bit more to myself with that same kind of idea. And then it was going to be like the board I was going to ride on the Gold Coast. But so it's interesting. You can kind of take uh, those ideas from guys that are really good at shaping in those certain areas. Love it. Elegant theft, boys. That's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> How did you process that heat with Zeke at Bells? Um, the heat with Zeke at Bells was in my really down mindset time and it just like pushed me even further down but it was a it was a good like wake up call for me you know because I kind of went into that heat like oh I'm just I'm just gonna surf my best and but then you have someone like Zeke who's so competitive and such a good competitor and he just starts like you know like really bad on you in the heat you're just like it threw me off 100% I was so thrown off I was like I, I was like standing up on waves and like falling like oh my gosh this is hard <laughs> but I think it, overall it was a really good wake up call for me. Was that one of those little personal moments that Zeke was probably cheering for you two years ago and now you're in a heat with him and he's trying to paddle out of the top of you thinking you're a priority boy? For sure. And that was right in that time that we were talking about, like, that was right when I was feeling like, oh, everyone's against me. Like, this is, <laughs> like, this is hard. <laughs> a lot of my practice when I couldn't surf was visualization, visualizing what I could do on the wave. The brain doesn't know 
what's real and what's not. So if you can visualize strongly, then it's sort of almost like you're doing it anyway. Um, you know, there's people like fighter pilots and stuff like that that will visualize for an hour a day just going through their whole routine from zipping up their suits to taking off their helmet after a flight. So is that something that you do or is that something that I'm just a weirdo and I do by myself? <laughs> no, I think it's super important. But I think, um, I don't know, the way we visualize might be different. Like I, I like to visualize, especially when I visualize about competing, I visualize... Uh, the feelings I want to have as the heat's starting in that mm. kind of mindset that I want to be in. And so... Um, what are those feelings? What, what, do you, what are those little triggers you're looking for, those tiny little things that we might not know? For, I mean, for everyone it's different, but for me it's more of just kind of like this uh, letting go almost and just surfing how, I, how I'm going to surf the heat, surfing the best I can, essentially. Um, and when I'm able to click into that mode... I feel as confident as I've ever felt, and I feel like I can like really commit to things a lot on a whole nother level. With that, like I had two keywords. Mine was mm -hmm. calm and confident. That were my. Yeah. That's where I sort of wanted to be going into a heat. Do you have keywords that you look at, or you just don't want to give those up? <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah, on, John. I, I like how Mick's giving up because he's not on tour anymore and trying to get me to give mine up. <laughs> Come on, I still got years ahead of me here. That's right. Stuff can change within a year, mate. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no. I, I think that, I think for me that my, my keywords are just like, surf the best, surf the best I can in this moment, kind of like what, it, with what I have. And it's more of like, it's not really a word, it's just this kind of that thought of like, I'm just going to surf the best I can right now. I'm super tired, then, then I'm going to kind of, hold back a little bit, you know, and I'm going to adjust my plan. And it kind of just reminds me rather than if there's a really good air wind, but my body's super tired, not to get overexcited and just go for airs the whole time. Cause that's probably not going to work super well. My rea reactions, everything's going to be a little slower. You know, competing against Parker for that, for that world title, our town was totally split. You know, there was, you'd be going down the street and someone would be going, go Parko. And then speaking to Joel, he reckons that people were going, go Mick. And like, I don't know if they were just fucking with us or what, but it, it's like, you start taking it a little bit personally. Um, I know when talking to Andy about when, um, after he won his first world title, he, he took it really personally. He was like, why is no one going for me anymore? Or this or that. Like he, he couldn't figure it out. You're my mate last year. Why aren't you my mate this year? Yeah, it's definitely, um, I felt that like the, that 2018 year, I don't know. I just, my mindset wasn't there. And I just felt like that no one was rooting for me. And I was just like, oh, this is so hard. I was, I was after my first world title and it was the next year on the Gold Coast. And some guy goes to me, so how does it feel, you know? He kind of won a world title, but Mick wasn't really on tour, so does it really count? <laughs> <laughs> you would have flogged me anyway. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. I didn't even know how to answer it. I was just so like, I was like, just took it to heart. I was like, oh. Mm -hmm.